Hey guys, it's just Jocelyn here. Welcome to Talk To Me Tuesday, episode 9. Tonight's topics are that age thing, cougars versus cradle robbers, and trust issues. So, I've been getting a lot of um, feedback and a lot of questions regarding the um, age thing. Actually, one of my newest viewers um, requested the topic, the age topic. And, um... It's, it's so much, I don't even want to call it controversy, but, I mean, that's a thing. Personally, I don't even know if I'm considered a cougar. I, I think I need y'all to, like, tell me because I'm 31. I mean, my current girlfriend, she's 24. <laughs> so, that's six years. Um, No, that's seven years, but she's about to be 25, and I just turned 20, 30, 31, so it's a little bit better. But, um, so, but it's a solid six years. Um, I've dated my last girlfriend. She was five years younger than me. Both of my last, my two ex-girlfriends were five years younger than me. I'm going to put some lip gloss on. Sorry. Yeah, I don't know what I had to do to get here, but I'm here and I'm on time. But anyway, yeah, so I guess, um, we just want to figure out what, what are the stipulations and what, category you fall in are you a cougar and this is for guys too i mean i guess we call male cougars sugar daddies or whatever y'all had a more popular name than the coup before the cougars came out but um basically a cougar for anybody who doesn't know is in my opinion a, a woman a older woman that seeks out and dates younger men in my case women um and um, but then a cradle robber. So then we basically the topic is cougars versus cradle robbers because then there's a slight difference. Like a cradle robber ideally is considered like somebody that's dating somebody that's way too young or you're like robbing the cradle like a baby carriage. So I just want y'all to tell me how do y'all feel about the topic and what 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 is the the silver lining to differentiate between the two because like I said it's it's a lot of buzz out there and I, I don't know I mean I'm asking personally too it's just like well am I considered a cougar or am I considered a crazy robber is it like a cougar is five years or younger or seven years or younger or 10 years and younger or is it and then, you know, your cradle robber if it's like 10, 15 years or whatever. So I really, I really am interested to know what, what you guys are thinking regarding this because, you know, it's it's a big it's a big thing. You got a whole lot of older women out here that are dating young younger people. You got a whole lot of older guys out here dating younger girls and younger guys. Like this is a not a gender specific topic. So, um, how does that work? How do you guys feel about it? Um when I was married, my ex-husband, he was nine years older than me. So it's just like, well, did he rob my cradle because it was nine years? Like, what what do we do? Um, I had people in my comments earlier saying that their <laughs> one person said her husband cradle robbed her. He's 11 years older than her. So it's just like, well, I think that in my opinion, I would say, excuse me, I would say a good bracket is like 10 years. <laughs> 10 years, you cradle robbing. Anything under 10, then you're just a cougar. And then it's just like, well, do we throw maturity into it? I think after after 30, it just doesn't matter anymore. Well, what do you mean? Like, it doesn't matter as far as anybody you date, you still a cougar or what? How'd that work? Sugar daddies are a myth. A man got to pay for his family one way or another. Yeah, now sugar daddies, I'm not getting into the... the um, the watered down term of a sugar daddy in regards to a man that's like an older guy that's going to pay for everything. And I'm not talking about that. I'm just simply talking about age. I'm not saying you seeking out an older guy to give you money and don't want to have sex with you. Cause that's not even true. Just cause the nigga is old. That don't mean he want to, he don't want to fuck and he just want to cut a check for you. It don't really work like that. I'm personally like to deal with women around my age. I'm 36. Okay. And that's understandable. And I feel like a lot of people may feel that way. I personally, like I said, my, my girlfriend happens to be younger than me, but I don't go out and seek younger people. I just, I don't know. I just attract them. Cougar, you have at least seven years over me. Now, Cradle Robert is somebody who is ten, who is older than 10 years. Okay, thank you, BJ. You always come through with the information, with the good stuff. So that's what I was figuring. Um, but then it's just like, well... 
it's only a difference of three years between a cougar and a cradle robber. We give him seven and then we give him ten. But then it's just like, then you have to also, we can't go about this without taking into consideration the maturity level of these younger people you're dealing with now if you got some type of mommy complex or these younger people that you're dealing with have a mommy complex thank you um then i guess it becomes more of a cradle robbing situation because i don't care how old i am and how young you are or whatever i don't want to feel like your mother like i don't want to feel like i'm here to take care of you like yes as a partner i got your back and everything like that but i don't I don't want to feel like like I'm just like adopting a child. That's not what a relationship is about. Because then you get into, okay, well, not only am I adopting a child, but I'm going to be having sex with this child. Mm -mm. So we got to draw the line about some of, this, some of this stuff. I think the age difference doesn't matter if both parties are over 30. Okay, that I could get, I could kind of get with. That is a really good point, India. Thank you. Because, yeah, once you're grown, you're grown. It's just like, mm. If I'm 35 and I meet a man that's 50 or a woman that's 50, I guess it doesn't matter. We're both just at a certain level of grownness, <laughs> if, if that's a word, a certain level of grownness. So, yeah, I, I I agree heavily with India because, yeah, if you're both, like, once you kind of get over 30, it's just like, I'm just kind of trying to kick it with somebody that's like me. But then it's just like, well, I'm over 30, so am I wrong for dating, like, 25 and ups? <laughs> I don't know. Um, if your mate is the same age as your grown child, then you're... Oh, my goodness, BJ. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I like that one. So, I, I do struggle with that because I do have a teenage son. So, um, of course, I'm not going to date a teenager. But then when you... Especially if you act like a fucking teenager. I don't care if you're 22, 25, 27. If you and my 14-year-old son have similar characteristics... That is going to bother me. It's going to fuck with me. It's going to fuck with my sex drive because I'm just going to be like, damn, not only do y'all like the same music, y'all dress the same, y'all talk the same, y'all use the same slang, y'all put up the same type of pictures on Instagram, like, so then I'm going to be irritated. So, yeah, so that's that's a big one. Those people that have kids, parents, whether you're a man or a woman, men, if you have a 17-year-old daughter, you shouldn't be dating a 19-year-old. And basically, they don't even have to be the same age as your child. But if they're in the same age bracket where they can date your child, because now we're talking about, we say in seven years. So if I got a 14-year-old son, who's to say that he can't date a 19-year-old or, six, you know, 17-year-old? Because that's within the seven years that we're talking about. So then that means I don't have no business dating somebody that my son could potentially date. Basically, I think is a good way to put it. Just even saying... They tend to label men as cradle robbing when the woman is 10 plus under them and the women are cougars. Yeah, so I don't know. It's just like, that's, that is fucked up. I do feel sorry for the guys sometimes because they, in most situations, guys get a bad rep. So that is kind of messed up because it's just like at the end of the day, the rules got to apply across the board. You know, we ain't going to be saying, oh, you're pedophile and this, this and that. When I'm doing the same thing. So I don't I don't think that we should. That's why I said this is not a gender specific topic. I feel like the ages are all I care about. Because it really doesn't matter. It's not like oh if you're a guy dating a younger girl. Then you're bad. But if you're a woman dating a younger man. Then you're not bad. Like no. Y'all both doing the same shit. And sometimes you know younger people make us feel sexier. Or that just might be who you just click with. It doesn't matter. Like. I don't want to be cliche and say AJ nothing but a number, but it is a good question. It's just like, well, does it really matter? Because at the same time, I could date somebody that's older than me, and they act younger than some of the people I've dated. So it's just like, it, I don't think that necessarily um, classifies, you know. And I know some people that are older that are dating younger people because they act young too. You're young-minded. Your maturity level has just not reached its peak. So y'all are on the same level, no matter which on your birth certificate. Um, let me see. Rashawn is saying, I don't think that the age matters if that person acts older. Right. That's basically what I'm saying, and they can take care of business. That's basically what I was saying, Rashawn, because it's, it's people that's older that ain't got a fucking clue. It's people that is younger that's on their shit. So it's just like, mm, yeah, I'm going to take this personal, person by person, individual basis, because just like, mm -mm, I can't be giving no across the board passes, and then y'all fuck it up. What's too old for your son? Well, my son is 14, and I feel like 
if we stick into what you said, seven years, so somebody that's 21, I personally wouldn't want my son to date a 21 year old, but I mean, he would just be the man and I would be wondering, well, like it's hard because it's my son. So it's just like, well, what are you doing to this woman? She's a woman. But I would say in a, in a realistic standpoint, I would say if my son was dating like a 16, 17 year old, it's just like, okay. Anything, but then, because once you get into 18 and over, then it's just like you're an adult and you shouldn't be dating with a child. Then once my son gets 18, then it's just like, well, if he's dating a 30-year-old, I'm going to be like, ooh. But when he when he's 18, like, I will no longer be 30. You follow what I'm saying? I just feel like, now, you don't want to be dating anybody that's the same age as your mother. I don't think that's cool at all. So if that did happen and my son was dating somebody that was my age, I would probably kill her. Or almost killer. So, that's just me being real. Um, 45 years old, and I can't attract nothing but younger women. But in retrospect, if Allah puts a mate in your path, that is his will. Back in the old days, African women and men wasn't the same age. American ways aren't our originality. Okay, well, that may be true. I just feel like we're just going to talk about it now. And what's, what's going on now? What's the situation? Um, and I just feel like it really... So, in my opinion, like I said, it depends. Um, like I said, I mean, I happen to, I tend to attract younger, um, those that are younger than me. And I, and I, I sometimes wonder, you know, because we have to look at it on both sides. So, me as the older woman in my relationship is just like, okay, well, you know, what do I want? When am I getting out of this person? You know, what am I doing with somebody that's younger? Do they have anything to offer me? And this, this, and that. And it really just, it takes us back to a couple episodes ago where it's just like, what what are you looking for out of a relationship? Like, what, what, what do you want this person to bring to the table? Because everybody, it just depends. You can't say once you're older and you're more established and you have a house and a car and a degree and this and this and that. Whereas, you know, what, what we have to get back to, <laughs> shut up. Hey, girlfriend. We have to get get back to, you know, what what is the basis of a relationship? A relationship is not necessarily what do you have and what do I have. It's just like, okay, what can we do for each other, you know, on an emotional level, on a spiritual level, on a physical level? You know, you might... I know some young bucks that got their shit going. They got cars. They got a house. They done graduated college. Shit, I'm 31. I haven't even graduated from college. So it's just like, well, who's to say, you know, that I'm it or, you know, they're not or whatever. But then it's just like, you have to be able to, you know, give to that person. What well, what do you have to offer? What do you bring in? Now, I'm not saying, you know, some, some people are immature. Some older people are immature. A lot of people still ha are figuring themselves out. It's not like, oh, once you turn 30, then you got life figured out. Or it, and if you're 21, you don't have a clue. Some people, it really is just an individual basis. Truthfully, cougars and cradle robbers are accepted in the black community. This is true. Thank you. But, um, yeah, so that's that's my whole thing. Is I think it has a lot to do with what you need and what you want out of a relationship. Because then that's when people start putting labels on things. And, oh, I can only date somebody older because, um, you know, they have to have this and they have to have that. And, like I said, it's a whole lot of people on the flip side of that. It's just like, yeah, you don't have to be 33 to have your own house and your own car. I got my first car when I was 19. I moved out on my own when I was 20. So it's just like, you know, that doesn't clarify or classify anything. And then it's just more so on a maturity level. Some some people really know how to treat you. And it's just like, and then what are you giving off? So I'm starting to feel like maybe, you know, yeah, I do have younger people that are drawn to me i feel like something about your mate something about your partner has to be desirable not just a physical attribute or not just sexually but something about them has to be desirable um to a certain extent kind of like not something like not that you want to be like them but that they have that they're going to be able to add some type of value to you like this person has something that i don't have that something that's going to help me. They're going to sow a seed in me. They're going to be beneficial. Like, it's one thing, like, to just be dating and, oh, you see this person, they look good, let's have sex or whatever. But what are you, like, are you going to actually cultivate my life? Are you here to help me? Can I really come to you and tell you my problems? Like, are you really going to be able to help me through some things? Are you really going to be able to teach me some things? 
are you going to be, you know, able to receive things I'm trying to teach you? Like, that's what a relationship is all about. Or MILFs consider cougars. MILF is simply <laughs> just, mom, I like to fuck. That's all that a MILF means. So it don't matter how old they are. If you see a 16-year-old, she's a MILF if she got a baby. And you want to fuck her. So, yeah. So, basically, what I was saying is it's just like, that's what, you know, is a, a relationship is all about. It's just like, what, what value can you add? So, sometimes, you know, you might meet somebody and, you know, they they be a little bit older. And it's just like... You, but I know for a fact I feel confident with this person. You know, they I can trust them with my feelings. You know, things like that, cause that makes a difference. It's it's a whole lot deeper than, you know, just what you see on the outside. And sometimes it's way deeper than the age thing. Um, right? Like I start to think, what am I doing to attract these young ass girls? I mean, do I look younger? But I'm 24 and I can't see myself taking an 18 to 21 year old seriously. So I don't feel that seven year gap. Okay. Yes, you do look younger, though. And I feel like, yeah, you look younger, but that's I feel like you're as young as you feel. Because some days I feel like I look young, some days I feel like I look old. But sometimes I feel like, at 31, I feel like I'm 45. I try to get in touch with my inner 29-year-old or 27 just to, you know, still be able to have fun and not feel like I'm an old-ass lady and I can't do anything. But it just depends on your life and how you carry yourself and the things that you do and the, you know what I mean? Your everyday life and your the the experiences you've been through makes a difference on how you carry yourself and how you are perceived and how you how others, you know what I mean, will attract to you because like I said, you got some young people that they done been through some shit and they be having old souls. Or how they were raised. That's a big one too, because you know, if you had somebody that was raised by like their grandparents or something and their grandparents been married for thirty years and they're only 26, so all they know is married grandpa and grandma, and they were taught to, you know, love and cherish and go on dates and buy you flowers, and this is, yeah, they're going to be like that, and they're going to be really appealing to somebody that's older than them when, you know, maybe others that are in their same age range are not doing that. So it's not about the age. It's all about what are you giving me that I'm not getting. I don't give a fuck if the people my age or the people younger, whoever's giving me what I need, that's who's going to get got. I don't really give a fuck how old you are. You could be 50 or you could be fucking 25. If you're making me happy, then I'm going to rock out. Um, Let's see. My stepdad is like six years younger than my mom and have been together since I can remember. But she only likes my younger partners. Hmm. She likes your partners? Maybe she sees something in, in them that, you know what I mean? Maybe you're just meant to be with a, a younger... um. A younger woman, Harold, or a younger partner. Can you be a cougar? Me, personally? Yeah, I feel like if we're talking about the seven years or younger, then I am a cougar. If we're saying that anybody that's within seven years younger than you, and you're dating them, then you're a cougar, then I would be considered a cougar because my current girlfriend is six years younger than me. So I'm just making it. I'm this close to robbing a cradle. And my other girlfriend's were five years younger than me so technically i'm a cougar i guess i think y'all just got me together but um yeah i just feel like like i said if they're adding some type of value to you um you know i haven't dated any i've dated people that were younger than me but they i didn't once i start feeling like okay i'm dating a child but if i don't feel like that then we cool we rocking out as long as I don't feel like I'm dating, like, your age, when you first meet somebody, that's when the age is an issue. But once they begin to prove themselves, then I don't want your age to keep coming up in other areas. It's just like, oh, I feel like I'm dating a 26-year-old. Like, you act like you don't got no business dating somebody like me. Then that's when that comes into play. Then that's when you check yourself. Like, well, what am I doing? Why am I, what am I doing? Am I, is this adoption? Am I, like, a foster parent? Or, or is this my partner? But if I don't feel like I am dating a child or dating somebody that is beneath me on my level, on my mental level, on my emotional level, on my physical level, then I'm cool. But if it's on some, every time I turn around, I'm cleaning up after you, wiping your nose, cooking you dinner, taking you to the doctor, you know, that's different. Doing your hair like, whoa, 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 whoa. Now, are you my child or what? But if you are able to, you know, we're benefiting from each other and I don't feel like it's a burden to be with you. 
I think that's what it comes down to, the burden. I think that was the word I was looking for. If you're not a burden, like a child is a burden. It's just like, okay, this is my my sole responsibility and their problems are my problems, but that's a burden. That's something that I don't have no, they can't give me nothing back. My child can't give me nothing back. It is my sole responsibility to take care of them. That's not a two-way street. A relationship is a two-way street. When you have a child, that's a one-way street. This is just give, 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 give. So if you're in a relationship where you just give, 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 and the person happens to be younger than you, then you're wasting your goddamn time. And then I'm going to ask you, what the fuck are you doing? And just on that note, even if they're not younger than you, if you're you're just giving, 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 and you don't get shit in return, don't have to be monetary or anything like that. But hey, baby, it's not even just about, you know, being monetary or anything like that. But if you're just a giver, 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 and you don't feel like you're receiving anything from the relationship, it doesn't matter if this person's older than you, same age as you, younger than you, you need to cut that out. We we just not even gonna go there. Like that's a, that's we. I had to stop there because people are in those situations. But as far as like you know being in a younger relationship, if I feel like this is a one sided thing, then you're my child now, and I'm claiming you on my motherfucking taxes, and that's it. I gotta buy you school clothes. I gotta fucking get your hair cut. I gotta cook you dinner. I gotta take you to the doctor when you're sick. I gotta cook you soup when you're sick. I need to hold you when you're crying. I gotta breastfeed you. Like, come on. Now, what the fuck? What are you giving me? But it's just like, so that's that's more so what you have to ask yourself. But that's in any relationship. But especially when you're when you are the older person in the situation, you have to feel like you're getting something in response. I mean, in in return, because there will come a time where you will, even if not um, physically, you will start to, it will start to mentally process to you and you'll start getting like small little resentments. It'd be like, oh, you're so fucking annoying or, oh, I don't want you to go nowhere with me because now you feel like an obligation. Like a partner is supposed to be an added plus to your life, not like, (sighs) here the fuck you go. Yeah, I got to go home. Yeah, my bae's calling me. Like, you shouldn't feel like that about your partner. Like, once you get there, it don't matter how old they are. They're annoying. But especially if they're younger than you, then it's just going to... Then you're going to start talking to them all crazy. Especially if you're in a, a, a older woman, younger male situation. Then you're going to start talking to them like they your little son. And who the fuck are you talking to? And you're getting on my fucking nerves. And I'm going out like... We still have to respect the dynamic of, you know, relationships. So, you nobody wants to be talked to like they're your child. Period. Like, who are you talking to? Don't talk to me like that. Even if I haven't reached my level of maturity, I'm still, I still can pick up on the fact that you're talking to me like you're, you're I'm your child. And I don't want that. Let me see. But what's the qualifications? Because some guys who date cougars say... They have to have something. Yeah, so that's what I was saying about the sugar daddies too. A whole lot of people, that's like a misconception. It's just like, oh, a sugar daddy is a man that dates a younger woman that, but the sugar daddy also has to have money because just because the nigga is older than you, that don't mean he got money. I know young bitches out here getting it and these older niggas is broke. So that doesn't, you fuck your, your whole life up thinking that you waiting around for this older man that got all his money. Or he might be old and he got money in retirement and investments. He ain't going to spend it on your dumb ass buying you Gucci and shit just so you can have Brazilian hair and say, oh, yeah, my sugar daddy bought it for me. Bitch, get the fuck out of here. So as far as the cougars, I feel like, what are they supposed to have? Good pussy? I heard that. Maybe because I, I, if, I, if, if I do qualify as a cougar, I don't got no money. I don't have no more money than I would have if I was dating somebody my age. I don't I'm not here just like cutting checks. Now I'm a I'm a a good partner, so I got you if you need something. But mm Sometimes it'd be the sex with the coo- the cougars want. So yeah, so now that's a thing too. Especially I know especially in like heterosexual cougar situations, like where it's an older woman, younger guy, they kind of have the impression that these younger guys are just gonna fuck the shit out of them and like some more i don't know if y'all seen some more um some more stand up a long time ago i'm probably sure on my age but she said something like a young nigga he'll fuck you on some timberland boots and just you know so that that's a whole but all a lot of this stuff is just misconceptions i can't speak on it personally um 
Like, I mean, I, I have good sex with my partner. I have good sex with all my partners. And the ones that were younger than me, yeah, we rocked out. My my ex-husband, we had good sex too when he was older than me. So I think sex is just an individual statement too. We can't blanket that like, oh, all cougars got good pussy. Like all old bitches just, as soon as you reach a certain age, your pussy just gets to a certain amount of potency. And now it's just qualified as perfect. Uh uh-uh, uh, but you might still have to do better. Some some of these old bitches, they done been around the block too many times and they shit might be weak. So you might be better off going back to the 18, 21 year olds that might not have been ran through as much. Because once you get a certain age and you done run around the block a couple times, popped out a couple kids, and you ain't take care of your body, then you might not be that top notch cougar status. You might be fucking it up for all of us since I'm a cougar now. I gotta own it. Um. Some older people try to treat you like a child for the beginning. Now that's a good one. And that's what I was trying to say. Like, I think it goes back to what are you what are you trying to get out of this relationship? And what are you what did you do to attract this person? Or what did they do to attract you? Because if you're the older one, I mean if you're the younger one, what about that person attracted you to them? Because if they're older and you they're so much older and they treated that means that, they treated you like a child from the rip, but do you have like some type of mommy complex or daddy complex? And this is not no shade to anybody that does, but I feel like I'm not a psychologist, but I feel like that's, that's when it starts getting into that. It's just like, maybe you have some deep rooted issues and you need to understand or try to take some time to figure out why is it that I keep drawing to these older men or, you know what I mean? These older women is it, you know, I don't know no better. Or, you know, I didn't have my dad around, so I do like that feeling of an older man taking care of me or whatever, whatever. And it's just like, oh, okay. But then it's just like, okay, so do you not date older guys because you, until you handle your fucking daddy issues? Because then that's when you'll be in a situation where you're just letting this nigga do any and everything to you. And, I mean, no shade to anybody that's been abused or something, but sometimes I feel like that'd be a reason too. Because people just stay because they think they don't have no other options or because they don't fucking know no better. It's just like, I don't know. I just feel like this is how it's supposed to be. And he's older than me. It's just like, yeah, baby, you got a daddy complex. You need to kind of draw those lines because this nigga's not your daddy. Personally, I'm not really into the whole call me, smack my ass and call me daddy thing. I'm not for that. You're not my fucking dad. I'm not calling nobody but my dad dad and my dad's dad. So I'm not saying that. Now, no shades to nobody that does. I heard it's just a freak thing. And, you know, I don't know. I can't speak on it that much. But certain things like that, I feel like if somebody's treating you like a child from the rip, it's not, you're not going into it as a partnership. You're not going into a relationship feeling like you're in a relationship with somebody. You're going, you know what I mean? You're coming in as a, as a, um, as inferior to the situation. You're not coming in as equal parts or superior. You're coming in like you're up here and I'm here because you're talking to me like a child. You're treating me like a child. But that also depends on how you, what you accept. So when we, let's go back to the sugar daddy thing. When these girls are, these young bitches out here looking for sugar daddy and they out here don't want to do nothing or do whatever they say so they could get that check, then yeah, you're behaving like a child that's getting allowance. So I'm going to treat you like that. Do this, do that, and I'll give you this. So it's all about what you, not only what you accept, but how you, how you presenting yourself. If you're presenting yourself like all you want me for is my money, then yeah, I'm going to treat you like a bitch that all you want is my money. You're going to work for this fucking money. And we don't have no partnership because partners give each other money. You can't just expect somebody to give you money all the time and buy you shit and you don't never do nothing. Well, what the fuck do you do? Like, what the fuck? What about unconditional? Unconditional what? Unconditional love? Well, you can't, you have to develop unconditional love. You can't meet somebody Love on first sight. Unconditional love is not on first sight. You can have love on first sight, but not unconditional love, in my opinion. Somebody else can elaborate. But Howard is saying, what about unconditional love? Yeah, I mean, I would develop some... If I love you, I'm going to love you unconditionally. But I don't love you the day I meet you and I find out that you're old. I love you unconditionally. No, I don't. Sometimes it be the sex... Yeah, I saw that. And trust depends on who won't... On you, won't let no... Want to change me or block my blessing? 18 are fucking harder and started younger now. This is true. Infatuation at first sight. Like, yes. So that's, I mean, if it's all about sex, we just going to keep it real. A lot of people be trying to create relationships out of sexual attraction or uh, infatuation because the infatuation is a bitch. You would think that you love somebody deeply and you want to marry them, but you're just infatuated with them or the idea of them. And you need to go ahead and ride that wave and then get off. 
child, do not fall in love with somebody that you're, you started off infatuated with. It will never work. I got bags under my eyes, guys. It'll never work. Because eventually, you'll be more into them than they are into you or vice versa. So, that's just my opinion. I don't think that you should try to do that because it's a bitch. So, let's call it what it is. If it's infatuation, say that. Ain't nothing wrong with it. I don't want y'all to think that it's something wrong with any of these things. Ain't nothing wrong with infatuation. Infatuation is basically when you see somebody, you're in awe over them. They it's, it's, a, it's a whole lot of lust involved in infatuation. So, and you like, like I said, the idea of them, some of the things that they might do, but it's not a love thing or it's not a respect thing. It's just a, it's like a kind of like, when you're infatuated with somebody, you're like a fan. Like, you're like their number one fan. It's just like, oh my God, like I, uh, like you can be infatuated with like Nicki Minaj or like a, a famous person, like, but that don't mean you love them. Like, as a person, they're probably, they probably suck. You know? This is Speedy just saying. Hey. Lust is fun. Lust is hella fun. And that's my whole thing. Like, all this stuff is fun. You just have to call it what it is. A lot of people be trying to make one thing out of... If it started as lust... Now, I'm not saying lust can't turn into love. I'm saying if it's lust, keep it as lust. Let it, let it flow. Don't try to say... Oh, I love him. No, 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 no. No, you don't. And all y'all do is fuck all day. No, you lust him. And that's okay, too. We're grown. Like, we that's that's not a big deal. We grown. You can do whatever you want. You know, there's nothing wrong with lusting over somebody. Grown people like to have sex. And I was saying this to somebody the other day. Like, everybody like, oh, I don't want to. Even that for, fuck, a first on the, fuck on the first date. And we had 931, so I'm going to get off of it. But just do what you want. When you grow, you do what you want. But in closing, cougars, based on what we're saying, cougars are anybody that dates somebody within a seven, seven year block. Anything over seven years means that you are a cradle robber. Where's the loyalty in relationships? What you mean? What do you mean? What do you mean? Moving forward, we're going to talk about, um, our second topic, which is trust issues. Now, I know that this can go long, and I don't want it to kind of be open-ended. So, I want us to kind of hone in on a couple things. Because trust issues is a wide topic. Wide topic. And I'm not about to talk to y'all till 1130. We're going to be here or a lot of time. So, what we're going to speak on in regards to trust is... We're going to piggyback off our current topic, the age difference. So how do you trust or are there, do you, do you come into a relationship where there's this huge age difference with pre-existing trust issues? Um, I personally would more so want to call them insecurities, but we're going to call them trust issues because a lot of people have a, a hard time differentiating between the two. So, um, how long is it okay to be less than with someone? However long you want to. Long as at no point you think you're in love and they're still in lust. That's where it really comes becomes an issue, um, Dolores. If y'all are lusting together, then that's cool. But if now one of y'all have fell in love with each other and this other person is just lusting over you, then you're never going to get any... That just takes us back to... You're never going to get anything in return because all they... They just... They're in lust. They don't have no other feelings for you outside of that. But now you, and that's usually how it goes. People try to deny it, but that's usually how it goes. One person falls for the other and lust turns into love on their end. But then they end up getting their heart broken because this other person had no intentions on ever loving you. And now you're fucked. And you're all fucked up emotionally and you look stupid and about to cry and you look dumb. But it's, it's okay because it happens. But just know. You can rock out as long as you're able to rock out. That's basically the best way to put that. Um, so, Mike is saying that social media messed up trust. I believe that a lot. Um, social media gets a bad rep when it comes to relationships these days, honestly. Because, you know, everybody is on social media. Everybody has followers and friends and exes and crushes and... Blah, 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 blah. Hey, Linda, for everybody who's just joining, we're on our second topic, which is trust issues. We're going to piggyback off of the age difference because I don't want to have a long conversation about trust because it's so, so many different areas. So when we're talking about trust issues, we're just going to basically, the question is, 
when you when when for those that are in um relationships where there is a huge age difference or a significant age difference do you have do you go into the situation with initial trust issues like are there pre-existing trust issues that carry on that just come along with okay i'm dating a 25 year old yeah i have trust issues or yeah i'm dating a 26 year old yeah i don't trust them or yeah i'm dating somebody that's older than me and i don't trust her or vice versa that's the question because it's just like okay so now with all the myths about cougars and sugar daddies and cradle robbers and cat daddies and old thoughts and milfs or whatever you want to call all these people it does kind of come with, just like I said, it's it's a whole perception about that person. Okay, so yeah, if you're a cougar, just like y'all said, cougars are expected to have good sex and they're expected to have their lives together and sugar daddies are expected to have money and, you know, the young boys that are dating the older people are that are dating the, young, the older women are expected to have good sex and, you know, be able to fuck for a long time. So all those things, it kind of comes with the package. It's like, well... If you're a 22-year-old and you want to fuck with a 35-year-old, she's going to presume that you can fuck really good and really long, but you probably don't have any money or what? But then she's also going to think, oh, but you might still be out here fucking these bitches that are your age because she has an insecurity about herself because... She knows that y'all are not in the same age range, in the same realm. Y'all may or may not even have any business dating each other. So then she has trust issues with you. She's coming into the situation not trusting you. Flirtation goes too far. I agree. Too many stories about each person assumes anybody post a pic or seeing what the issue. My trust issues come from play brothers and work cousins oh yeah so we could get on that if you trust your partner you trust them social media don't reach out to prospects the person does this is true mm, i've always dated older not sugar daddy old though cougars get respect they give wisdom knowledge and experience and establish sometimes so what do you do when you come across a cougar that don't have no motherfucking sense she just happens to be older than you she don't got no knowledge no nothing to give you she just happens to be older. She just automatically a cougar. But we offer that, so it doesn't matter. But so as far as the social media, we can get on that. Social media and relationships. So I'm a firm believer in it's all about the person. I don't give a fuck how many followers you got, how many fans you got, how many friends you got on Facebook, how many followers you got on Instagram, who pits her eyes or whatever. Me personally, I think we discussed this before. Me personally, I'm... I'm more of a, a ego stroke anyway. So I'm not fucking with nobody that everybody don't want. That's just, I don't know. It might, I'm not saying I've never had trust issues and I've never been in a situation where, you know, I didn't have my doubts or questions. But at the same time, okay, but you left a hurt eye. I don't really give a fuck. Like some people take all that shit too far. It's just like, yeah, now some of the, the followers, they take it too far by putting three and four hurt eyes and kissy faces and this, this, and that. But then you as the partner, where is your confidence? Like, okay, who gives a fuck? The bitch put her eyes under your picture. What? Okay. She ain't laying here with you. I could be laying right here checking these fucking notifications. Like you have to have some type of confidence in your situation. That's when, you know, y'all start getting like that when you know damn well you with somebody that's for the people. Now, if you know he, with, he for the people, then don't act stupid. Don't be acting like he belongs to you. You know he don't. So then don't even get mad. You don't even have the right to get mad. But as far as trust, I don't think social media itself can take away the trust you have in your partner. Now, what I will say is, on initial dating, initial meeting, people tend to meet somebody, oh, sorry guys, I had a phone call. They don't even say, I forgot to turn my phone on, do not disturb. They don't even ask, like, hey, what's your what's your phone number? People are like, oh, what's your Instagram? What's your Snapchat name? You on Facebook? Like, damn. Because now what you're going to do is, when you first meet me, you didn't even get my number, but you're on my Snapchat. You're going to go on my Instagram. You're going to see how many followers I got. You're going to go look at all my pictures. You're going to like all my pictures. But then you're going to read my comments. If you really like me, you're going to read my comments. See who's this. Now it's all these frequent people like, oh, she be posting on like almost all her pictures. She sends her, her, her eyes. So then it's just like, well, did she go with her? Or did she used to mess with her? Or they probably talk or... 
And it could be my fucking best friend or it could be my mom or because you don't fucking know. But people want to draw their own conclusions. This is like people kind of go into things wanting something to be wrong. It's like, let me go check her Instagram. And then it's just like, instead of going there and seeing my pictures and seeing the type of stuff I get into, you're so busy looking at my comments and getting jealous already over something that probably don't even exist. Um, let me see. I think the trust issues are more likely in the older person. Yeah, because then they just kind of feel like, oh, well, but I, I don't think it's a trust issue. I think it's more of an insecurity because you have you have this, Little conscious on your shoulder telling you, mm, you probably shouldn't be dating her anyway. She's probably too young for you. She probably has guys in her school or guys in her neighborhood or that are trying to talk to her. And you might not be worthy and she might be using you or whatever. And y'all got to get over that. It's just like either deal with the person or don't. Don't bring your pre-existing baggage issues to me. Don't give me no label um, label trust. Like you're, you're coming right out the back like, oh, because you're older, you probably got this. Like, I don't like that. Excuse me. Social media did not mess up nothing. Word of mouth is the greatness. Um, social media became a new background check. That's real shit because people will go, like I said, people won't even ask for your number. They're like, oh, what's your Instagram? I had people say that to me all the time. Yo, follow me on Instagram for what? Like, unless you're like a business or you're trying to promote your mixtape or something that I probably don't care about anyway. I don't want, that's not going to be my first point of contact with you. If you're trying to get to know me, you're going to probably need to hit me up because you're going to try to piece together what you think you know about me from my Instagram and you're going to be lost. I post what the fuck I want. I go weeks without posting nothing or I post every day. I could put up 17 memes in one day all about different shit and people probably think that I'm crazy, but I'm not. So it's just like, that's just stupid. Like, people just do that all the time. And it's just like, and what you do is end up, you fuck shit up for yourself because you're so busy. You're creating your own idea of that person. Like, no matter how you want to slice it, that's not even up for debate. It's just like, you have created your own trust issues. You want, do you either want something to be wrong? You're going to find one person that comments on... 10 out of their 25 pictures and that person you're just going to presume that they talk to. God forbid y'all actually go any go anywhere further with the relationship. Let that person call their phone for the first time or something. You're going to snap out. Like, oh my gosh, she probably talked. And people, that's the one thing I have to say about people. As far as trust issues, you could not trust somebody, but you will not ever just open your mouth and say, I do not trust you. Like, out of, like those exact words. You will give them a side eye. You'll talk shit to your friends. You'll be thinking this and you'll be mad, huffing and puffing, boiling your face up. And nobody knows what the hell's going on with you. All this, you develop some... You have officially made up a girlfriend for me. I could look at my Instagram right now. Maybe we should all do it. Every, when we get off the call, I mean, when we get off the show, go to your Instagram. Look at your last, depending on how many pictures you have, look at your last 20 pictures. Look who's your most frequent commenter. In some people's case, it may or may not be their boo or bae or somebody talked to or somebody fucking, somebody used to fuck or whatever. Sometimes it really is just your friends. It really just be your friends being Joe, hyping you up like, yes, girl, you look so sexy. And, you know, friends, don't, they don't never keep shit real um, straightforward and platonic. They be like, yes, baby, you good, look so good. And for somebody that's trying to get to know you, the first thing you're going to do is look at these comments and you're going to assume that this is my girlfriend or this is my... Especially it's hard for me because you're just going to assume, oh, you must mess with her. You must... Child, you done fucked yourself over and this is my best friend. And by the time you go to meet her because I really thought we was going to have something, now you giving her the side eye. Now she don't like you because she's trying to figure out why you giving her the side eye. Now you done fucked it up. See how that goes? Illusion and reality are way different. Fucking right. Because people just definitely do make assumptions. It's just like... You know what they say when you assume you make an ass out of you and me. You won't make an ass out of me. You can make an ass out of your damn self. Because chill the fuck out. You wanna, you got a question, ask. And I feel like people just aren't up front these days. Everybody want to snoop around and guess and say this and think that or whatever. Be mad. How many situations? How many times y'all been in a situation where you was mad or you was kind of irked? Then, but you didn't say you were upset or anything, but clearly your body language or something about you gave off that you were upset. upset. Your partner picked up on it, so now they're mad. They're mad because they think you're mad. They don't know why you're mad. You don't even know why they're mad. Now you're mad because they're mad, and they're only mad because they think you're mad. It sounds stupid, right? But that's really how it goes. 
So it's just like, I don't even understand why these days people don't just, just say something. Yo, what the fuck was that? Speak, especially if you're in a relationship with somebody, you can say what the fuck you want. I don't give a fuck if you're going to get mad. Who was that? What is this? What is this? What I want to know right now. You owe me an explanation. Yes. We're in a relationship. You have to answer my question. And that's what a lot of people, y'all get that shit fucked up. Oh no. I can ask you what I want. Yes. Mm -hmm. When you feel like you can call me at any given time of the night and say, oh, I want to have sex. Uh, who was that? What are you doing? Fuck that. Mm -mm. That's not up for debate. No. What are you doing? I didn't like that. I'm going to tell you right now. I didn't like that. I prefer if you don't do that no more. Now, you can go ahead and do it again if you want to. And then guess what? Now, we need to bring all this to the valuation table. Because it just might be time for you to go. You might have reached your expiration date. But I, I feel like I don't understand why people be scared to talk to their partner. Like, if you don't like something, say it. You, I'm not walking around balled up. And I've done it before. And that's why I can speak on it. I've walked around with an attitude and didn't say this and did Fuck all that. I'm not doing that shit. You get on my nerves, I'm telling you today, right now. I'm not going to wait till next Thursday to say, remember on Tuesday the 11th, you was getting on my nerves so bad. Bitch, I don't even remember what I had for breakfast this morning. You talking about some shit that happened three weeks ago. Fuck that. I'm telling you right now. Yo, you got my nerves. Now, I'll probably give you an hour or so. Like, if we out in a social setting, I'm like, yo, earlier, don't do that shit no more. I wasn't feeling none of that. I'm not, I've never been shy to say it in a social setting. But I be trying not to draw these days, so I'll wait. I might hit you with a, yo, what the fuck? But I try not to. Older people try to brainwash the younger person so that they won't stop messing with them. It's like make them love them before they leave them alone. So as far as that, I just feel like that speaks a lot about who you are and what you're receiving and how vulnerable you are. Because what I will say is people will prey on you no matter whether they're older or not. You could have people at your same age. People will prey on your weakness. Now, that's a fact. I get that all the time from women I try to talk to. Them. That's a fact. Like, people will prey on your weakness. So if you have a weakness or you know you have some issues or you know you have some vulnerabilities, you need to try to work on them or at least try to mask them before you go out and try to date because what's going to happen is people are going to pick up on them. And some people will be willing to help you work through them. But some people, they're just humans. And some people really prey on your vulnerability. If somebody know you a quote-unquote weak bitch or they know that you have, let's say daddy issues so to speak and i don't mean to keep using that but that is a big one with this topic um if if a if a guy meets you and he knows that you're not the strongest woman i'm not gonna say you're a weak bitch but you're not the strongest woman and you don't really have an idea on how a man treats a woman and what's acceptable and what's proper then yeah he's going to take advantage of you he he's a pussy we ain't gonna give him no pass but he's a human and he just, he's not the strongest man. And that's usually how it go. It's usually the weakest niggas is going to find the weakest bitches. Because just like they want to still feel superior. So I'm only going to be able to get over on somebody that's weaker than me. You can't come across a strong bitch and be a weak nigga. Because now I'm going to eat you alive. So you, you have to um, just understand where you stand in the situation. And sometimes... You know, now I'm not saying that somebody that is a little weaker can't be with somebody stronger because it just depends on what, what they're trying to get out of you. If you feel like you're being preyed upon at any given time, if you feel like, like I said earlier, that it's not re reciprocity in the situation. Like if y'all not giving each other something back and forth, like if you just feel like it's just a take, 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 and you just feel empty after dealing with somebody, then yeah, then that's a problem. Yes, you've been my fuck. But at the same time, you have to develop some strength. You need to get people around you that are stronger. You need to be around some stronger women. If you're not, the, and I don't want to keep using the word weak bitch in a negative manner, but some people are just weak and it's not a wrong thing. Everybody needs uplifting. But you can't be a weak bitch and you hang with all weak bitches and everybody you know is weak and they don't have a fucking clue on how a nigga's supposed to treat, a, how a man's supposed to treat a woman. All they know is niggas that's beating their fucking ass or giving them a little couple of dollars and they fucking and sucking for $300 and they feel like they got, they winning. No, bitch, you're not fucking winning. You's a weak bitch. And this nigga is a weak ass nigga, cause, but he's taking advantage of you because you're allowing him. We're not going to give it all to the man. You're allowing yourself to be taken advantage of. 
And it's really, truth be told, because you don't know no better. If the only people that you hang around or the only people that you surround yourself with or the only examples you have in your life are not strong women or strong individuals, then yeah, you're fucked. Because then a, a, a stronger person is going to overpower you. That's just simple science. Physics, I don't know what part of science that is, but the strong outweighs the weak, period. But it takes a real strong person, somebody that's strong and that they care about you, and then they will try to bring you up. They will try to uplift you. They'll try to borrow a little bit of their strength and give it to you and teach you some things and uplift you for you to be a better person. But sometimes it don't work like that. And the stronger person will just overpower you and they will win and they will take all that you have. The little bit of crumbs that you got, they're going to take them and just add them to their whole slice and you'll be fucked. And now they're strong and you'll be left to be by yourself. And now you're even more fucked up than you were before. And they're going to go on with their life because now they're even stronger than they were before. And that's just how it's like a dog eat dog world out here. Right. Only the strong survive. And that's not every part of your life. And I just say this to anybody that's on the on the show, male or female, get some strong people around you. And and I don't want y'all to take me saying the the term weak in a negative manner because not everybody's strong. And even the strong people, there's somebody stronger than them. But you have got to get you a strong foundation, get you a strong support system, get you some friends that ain't your age. If you 17, then you need to get, it's nothing wrong with you having a 32-year-old friend. Fucking right. You know when they say, I blame your old head? Hell yeah. It's the people around you's fault. If you 19, 20, and you hang with a bunch of 28 and 30-year-olds, and you out here getting dogged out, stop hanging with them bitches. Because it ain't always about the age, but at the same time, like, y'all need to be putting these people on game. And this, that's, that's a, a, it's a slang, ebonic term, but that's some real shit. Like, everybody is here to be a resource. I know, <coughs> excuse me, some of you guys seen my, my post this week, but y'all need to really be resources to people. Like, your friends, you got to get better friends. Like, um, it's a saying that if you're the... If you're the strongest out of everybody, or if you're the smartest out of all your friends, then you need to get more friends. And it's also another saying that says, you are the combination of the five people that you hang with the most, that you surround yourself with the most. So think about that. That's something that I want y'all to take away from today's um, show. The five people that you hang around the most, this means who do you talk to in a seven-day period? Who do you talk to? Who are the top five people that you interact with? Whether it's at your job, whether it's your family, whether it's your friend, whether it's your boyfriend, girlfriend, whether it's your teacher, whether it's your kids, whatever. Who are the top five people that you interact with on a regular basis on a five-day period? That's a combination of who you are. And that is something to think about. Also, you need to, you don't want to be the smartest. I've been in that situation and I'm not saying none of my friends are dumb or anything like that. But yeah, there comes a time when no, I don't want to be the only person giving, giving, giving. Yes, I want people around me that can give to me too. So no, I don't want to be the smartest friend and I don't want to be the cutest friend. Like it goes with all the other scenarios. Just like, I don't want to be the cutest either. I don't, right. I don't want to be the cutest. I don't want to be the smartest. I don't want to be the dumbest either. But it's just like, yeah. You need to, you can't be the smartest person in your clique because you need to get a clique. At some point, you have to level up. Y'all all singing these rap songs and it's called Level Up. Yeah, you got to level up your squad. Yeah, the same people you might not be. It's not even about being friends with your old friends or nothing like that. But you just need to continue to evolve. That's the word, like evolve. Like there's nothing wrong with evolution. You don't have to leave people behind, but you need to continue to progress. Some progress needs to be made consistently. Consistent progress. If you're not consistently moving forward, consistently level, leveling up every six months or learn to meet new people. People don't want to fucking meet people and they want to stay stuck in their same friends and they same neighborhood and go to the same bars. Fuck all that. So, I mean, that's, that's, I didn't even expect to go there, but that's, that's definitely important. It, and I'm brought it up more so back to, I hope, um, the person that was listening that was just talking about. Um, the older people trying to kind of, you know, mind fuck the younger ones and, and get them out there. And it's just like, you have to, you have to be strong. You have to prepare yourself to go out here because nobody should be able to mind fuck you. It's deeper than dating. You need to have your own personal 
strength, your own personal armor before you hit these streets. People ain't out here. Everybody's out for self. That's a fact. That's human fucking nature. Everybody's out for self. Humans are animals and we are all out for self. Now, there may come a time once in a while where you want to help somebody, but overall, I'm not ever putting you before me unless it's a child. And sometimes even that's not 100%. So it's just like, it's not even about, Harold saying everybody don't want you to pass them. It's not even about passing, but it's just like everybody, you have to be responsible for yourself. Like at some point you have to work on your inner strength so that you'll be ready to deal with this shit. You can't just come and be super mushy, not even mushy like emotionally wise, but you can't just be an incomplete something because how nobody can't help you. Like, Damn, I'm, I'm incomplete myself. I can't give you everything I got. Like, what? do you have anything? I can't just build you up from scratch. Like, what are you coming with? At least come with half of your Legos made and I'll add a couple Legos to it. But you can't just come as a bucket of Legos. Not, no pieces connected. God damn. That's why strong starting five we in Chicago Bulls. I know that's the fuck right. Um, what's considered mind fucking? Now mind fuck. That's a, it's a couple terms with that. In the regards that we was just using it, she was more so just saying that, um, you know, the older guy or the older girl, older woman or man, usually tends to like more so play mind games. So just like really fuck with your mind. But again, that my whole point was somebody can't fuck with your mind if you unfuck wittable. Like, damn, dog, like, you have to have a little bit of sense. Like, you can't really be in a situation where somebody really can tell you anything. Like, have a little bit of backbone. Have a little bit of your own common sense. Just like, or at least, at the very least, have some resources that you can go back to. Like, you can't just let a nigga tell you, oh, yeah, because, let me think of a good example. Yeah, well, do this, do that. But if you don't know, it's nothing wrong with you not knowing. But then go fucking ask somebody. Ask your... You should have somebody in your life that's married, you know what I mean, or that's been in a long-term relationship, or that, you know what I mean, something like that. It's just like, okay, so I'm going to go ask, I'm going to ask her, because I really don't know. Just like you would ask your teacher if you didn't know the answer to something. You're not just going to give a dumbass wrong answer. You're not just going to let this bitch tell you the answer's 32. But because you don't know, you're just going to write it the fuck down? No, ask the fucking teacher. That's what they're there for. And your friends should be a resource, too. If your friends ain't resourceful, fuck them. If I can't call you and ask you a question, like, I need your advice. Somebody told me something or, you know, this is your area of expertise. So that's, maybe I need to figure out who your starting five going to be. I'm, when I'm done, I'm going to go write mine down too because it's all about evolution. I have good friends, but, you know, I need to level up too. You should have a couple people in your area that, I mean, in your life that you can go to different things about. So that's what we were talking about as far as the mind fuck. I mean, the reverse mind fuck is more on a lustful sexual term because um, I think of a mind fuck like somebody that can get to you intellectually, like turn you on intellectually. Like, yo, we just be talking about history and books and it just turns me on. Like your vocabulary is impeccable and things like that. Yeah, that's a mind fuck too. Because you get somebody up here, oh, you got them down there all day. Turn somebody, you ever try turning somebody on, like, mentally, like, mentally stimulating somebody? Child, you will love them, marry them, and want to have all their babies. Because it's just like, oh, my God, like, we could just talk about anything. You're so smart, I'm so smart. We just, we intellectually click, and that's, like, a, the best orgasm. So that's what that, the mind fuck means. Let me see. I'm trying to read a couple more of y'all comments before I go off. Let me say. Stay with a jewel, no connected Legos. <laughs> Buck is a Lego, that's much for a fuck with my mm -hmm. Yes, that's a sapiosexual. That is what I wanted to say. My brother actually put me onto that word. Sapiosexual is somebody that is turned on to the minds of others. I'm I'm gonna post the actual definition of that on my page because it is um, 10 o'clock. I just wanted to let everybody know, number one, um, of course, as always, thank you guys for joining in. I appreciate y'all. Um, I, I know I look bad. I hope y'all don't be talking shit about me. But, um, I want to thank all you guys. For everybody that doesn't know, I didn't post it yet, but 
all of my episodes are now loaded on my YouTube page. My YouTube channel is Just Jocelyn. So you can search me on YouTube, Just Jocelyn, J-U-S-T-J-O-C-E-L-Y-N, and you can see any of the old episodes. So that's for anybody that wants to um, share this. Y'all can always share the, the videos on your page, but I know I have a lot of friends and a lot of people that are interested in the show, but they don't have Facebook or they forgot their Facebook password or can't get into Facebook or whatever. The shows will still be live on Facebook, but after the the live, the live taping, then I will be uploading the videos on YouTube. So that's for everybody that has been asking about that. If you have friends that you want to refer and they don't use Facebook or whatever. So definitely do that. Y'all just continue to comment. Continue to share the videos. Um, I still can't get any more friends. But I still can accept followers on Facebook. Y'all can follow me on my other social media. Um, Instagram is just Jocelyn. My Snapchat is um, Styles by Yaz still. So y'all can follow me on everything. If y'all have any more questions, y'all can always inbox me. If you have topic suggestions, you can inbox me. Um, for those who are watching this late, y'all can still comment because I do still check the comments after the fact. So, um, and for anybody that's missed any episodes before today, all of my episodes are also posted on my Facebook page. So they're always up there. You guys can go look at them, watch them again and again and again, share them, continue to share, continue to comment. I appreciate all of you guys. Thank you so much. Good night.